In at number 10, we have Tyra Banks. Tyra Banks got in a lot of trouble in 2020 when old clips of her on America's Next Top Model resurfaced. And in the clips, she's seen talking down to the women, giving them bad advice, and being a hypocrite. One viral clip shows Banks telling contestant Danielle Evans that the gap in her teeth is quote, not marketable, and she should close it if she wants to get a CoverGirl contract. But then only a few cycles later, Tyra told a different girl to actually widen her gap. You know, completely different stories. In response, Banks tweeted out, quote, been seeing the posts about the insensitivity of some past ANTM moments, and I agree with you. Looking back, those were some really off choices. Appreciate your honest feedback, and I'm sending so much love and virtual hugs. And let's just say what she said to the women on the show would definitely not be tolerated today. And at number nine, Michael Scott, The Office. Steve Carell's character in The Office is notoriously one of the most politically incorrect characters ever created. And some of the show's most popular episodes center around racially insensitive and sexist stereotypes. One of the show's most offensive episodes is called Diversity Day, where Michael tries to teach the staff to not use racial stereotypes. But he does so by basically discussing every racial stereotype that there is. With the recent rise in popularity of the show, fans are now begging for a reboot. But Carell says the show could not be made today, saying in one interview, quote, the climate's different. I mean, the whole idea of that character, Michael Scott, so much of it was predicated on inappropriate behavior. I mean, he's certainly not a model boss. A lot of what is depicted on the show is completely wrong-minded. That's the point, you know? But I just don't know how that would fly today. And he is definitely right. That show would be canceled on Twitter in a second if it was made today. And at number eight, Robert Downey Jr., Tropic Thunder. This movie is constantly in controversy because Robert Downey Jr. portrayed a black character in the film, even wearing makeup to make him look the part. In the movie, Robert Downey Jr.'s character, Kirk Lazarus, is an Australian method actor who undergoes pigmentation alteration surgery to darken his skin tone in order to play a black character in a war movie. And the fact that Downey Jr. has black skin and features practically the whole movie has been a controversial topic since the movie was released years ago. Downey Jr. spoke about the controversial decision to play the character on an episode of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast saying that initially he had a lot of reservations about playing the character, but his heart was always in the right place. Adding that most of his black friends did not have an issue with the film, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't wrong. Adding that essentially all he can do now is admit it's wrong and be better in the future. And at number seven, Jimmy Kimmel. In June of 2020, Jimmy Kimmel apologized after he was exposed for acting in a series of sketches from earlier in his career where he darkened his skin to impersonate black stars, like NBA player Karl Malone and Oprah Winfrey. He said in a statement at the time, quote, I apologize to those who are genuinely hurt or offended by the makeup I wore or the words I spoke. Also taking the time to criticize those who were using this event as a weapon against his frequent criticism of social issues on his show, which some people felt made him a hypocrite. And at number six, David Letterman's old interviews. Several old interview clips of David Letterman's have resurfaced recently, and many are saying he crossed major lines. One example was with Lindsay Lohan in 2013. She did that interview recently out of rehab, and Letterman persistently asked her questions about it. She said that she didn't want to talk about it, but he kept pressing, leading her to cry. Next up was Janet Jackson. Letterman was pressing her about her infamous Super Bowl incident, asking her questions about how her wardrobe malfunction came to be. Right after she was asked about it, she replied, quote, I don't want to relive any of that. But Letterman kept asking, Well, Jackson looked very annoyed. Lastly, it was an interview with Jennifer Aniston, where Letterman actually tasted a piece of her hair. anyone would do that, but it was really inappropriate. Thankfully, I don't think any of these interview moments would fly today. Halfway number five, Ellen DeGeneres. Ellen has won many awards over the years for being nice. Most recently was in 2016 when she accepted a People's Choice Award for Favorite Humanitarian. She said in her acceptance speech, quote, this is crazy. I mean, so, so deserved, but this is crazy. I have to say it's a little strange to actually get an award for being nice and generous and kind which is what we're all supposed to do with one another. That's the point of being human. And what's funny here is that years later, she would be exposed for basically being the most two-faced person alive, with her being called notoriously one of the meanest people in Hollywood, who is rude to guests as well as her own staff. This changed people's perceptions of her so much, people were wondering if she would be able to come back to her show. She eventually did come back to a lot of backlash, and her image hasn't really recovered since. 
something tells me she won't be winning any awards for being nice anytime soon. In at number four, James Charles. James Charles went through one of the worst cancellations of all time in 2019, when he was exposed by one of his good friends, Tati Westbrook, for using his fame and influence to trick straight men into falling for him, with her setting examples of manipulation and even pressuring some men too. Then Jeffree Star famously jumped on the bandwagon and exposed that James had not been allowed in his house calling him a danger to society. At the time, James released a response video and convinced us these allegations were false, which we ended up believing. However, very recently, James was accused by two people for exchanging inappropriate photos with them, with fans specifically calling out the fact that James seems to use his followers as a dating pool, which James ended up addressing on Twitter. And many are now thinking that Tati could have actually been right this whole time, and many of his fans are pushing for him to address the situation further. And at number three, David Dobrik. David Dobrik has acquired an image of being wholesome and nice from his videos, even though a lot of his videos show dangerous things taking place or even show harmful pranks. One of David's old pranks featuring Seth Francois is now being called out by many for being a form of SA, which is an acronym people are describing the allegation with. This is because in the video, David convinces Seth that he is going to be making out with Corinna Koch, a girl from the vlog squad that Seth likes. But there is a catch, and she's going to be wearing a mask while they're kissing. The prank ensues, and we learn later that Seth was actually kissing Jason Nash, another Vlog Squad member, not Corinna, like he anticipated. David is currently being called out for the incident on all platforms, but he has yet to address it. People online are adding that it's laughable that he's currently on an anti bullying tour when he's been accused of this in the past. And at number two, Bella Thorne. Bella Thorne has long been an advocate of adult performers and creators on sites like OnlyFans, doing what she can to stop the stigma behind the industry. However, that support all went south when Bella joined the platform herself and ended up permanently ruining it. This happened because Bella deceived her fans into thinking that they were getting lewd photos of her when they actually were not, causing a record number of people to request chargebacks. This then caused OnlyFans to change their entire policy on tips and cap the amount creators could receive, permanently hurting those creators. And many people now wish she just never joined the site to begin with. And finally, number one, Hilaria Baldwin. Ilaria Baldwin was recently exposed for lying about her Spanish heritage, now that old clips are resurfacing where she's using a Spanish accent. It started when one tweet went viral, saying, quote, You have to admire Hilaria Baldwin's commitment to her decade-long grift where she impersonates a Spanish person. And in the replies of that tweet were tons of videos of Hilaria using a Spanish accent and claiming that she was from Spain. However, internet sleuths got to the truth. And she actually isn't Spanish at all. Her parents just vacationed there a lot growing up and currently live there now. Also, her name isn't even Hilaria. It's actually just Hillary. One clip that went super viral was of her cooking a meal and forgetting the English word for cucumber while speaking in a Spanish accent. Beginning list at number 10 is Logan Paul's YouTube video. It has been four years since he posted this YouTube video that ended his entire YouTube career. He was once one of the biggest YouTubers in the world until he posted a vlog video of him and some friends going to the famous Japanese suicide forest. In the video, they actually came across a real dead body of someone who took their own life. And in his video, they are kind of making light of the situation. He lost everything, all brand deals, including a partnership with Google's preferred program, which is worth millions of dollars. He was able to build back an audience and create the biggest podcast in the world, but then that video came back to haunt him. In December of 2020, he was sued by a movie company called Plainless Pictures, who claimed that he signed a deal with them back in 2016 to make a movie called Airplane Mode. In the lawsuit, it states that he was supposed to star in it and help write and produce it and distribute it through YouTube. Apparently, there was a $3 million licensing deal with Google, and since Logan obviously lost his partnership with Google, their movie plan just came crashing down. And now, they want him to pay up. Four years later. <laughs> that sucks. Coming in at number nine is Donald Trump's tweets. I know what you're thinking. Which ones? He's always been known for his ridiculous tweets, but one Twitter moment isn't aging very well right now. Back in 2017, during his first year as president, he did an interview and told the Financial Times, without the tweets, I wouldn't be here. I don't regret anything because there is nothing you can do about it. You know, if you issue hundreds of tweets and every once in a while you get a clunker, that's 
not so bad. So without the tweets, he wouldn't be here as president is what he said. Kind of ironic when thinking about what is happening during these times. His Twitter account was suspended and then banned along with the rest of his social media. And Joe Biden won the election and he was officially removed from the White House. So maybe without his tweets, he really won't be here anymore. We're not really sure. I feel like he's gonna like somehow try to make a new Twitter account. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Sliding into number seven is Jimmy Fallon doing blackface. Any blackface moment isn't right at any point in time, but Jimmy's moment seemed to get pushed under the rug until it resurfaced many years later. Old footage surfaced during the height of the 2020 Black Lives Matter movement and showed Jimmy Fallon on SNL doing blackface. The footage shows sketches he did from two decades ago where he impersonated fellow comedian Chris Rock while in blackface makeup. Jimmy immediately took responsibility for it though and issued an apology saying, in 2000, while on SNL, I made a terrible decision to do an impersonation of Chris Rock while in blackface. There is no excuse for this. I am very sorry for making this unquestionably offensive decision and thank you all for holding me accountable. No matter when this footage resurfaced, he would have faced a ton of backlash because our eyes have been more open to more this past year to the racism that exists in our world and has always existed, but often overlooked. So no matter what point in time, this video would have been bad. However, he got away with it back then. So making her way into number six is Michelle Fawn and her essential oils. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, many influencers have spread misinformation about essential oils, but Michelle was the first to do it. So it did not age well as the virus got significantly worse and has lasted over a year already. Some people believe that essential oils have antiviral properties and could protect you against the COVID-19 virus. However, studies have shown that there is very little evidence of this being true. Back in February, at the start of this whole pandemic, beauty guru Michelle Phan posted on her Instagram about using an antiviral essential oil kit to kill off the virus before it enters your system. She wrote, our first point of contact for viruses is our nose. If you are burning antiviral essential oils around you, this will kill off the virus before it enters your system. Many people chimed in on this topic and Dr. Pimple Popper was one of them. She reposted it on Twitter and said, sorry, antiviral essential oils don't exist. This definitely did not age well, seeing as the virus has been going on for over a year now and has killed hundreds of thousands of people. I don't think essential oils is or ever was the solution to COVID-19. Halfway through our list at number five is Charlie D'Amelio hanging out with friends. The 16 year old TikTok star once went on her Instagram live stream and talked about the importance of staying home and social distancing. She even decided to tweet out her feelings about seeing other people online hanging out with their friends. She posted, if you're using this time to hang out with your friends since you don't have school, please, I'm asking you, please stop being so inconsiderate to others. It was great to see her being responsible, but that went away very quickly after fans started calling her out for filming videos with a group of friends and going on vacation to the Bahamas with people, obviously friends and family, just days after she posted that. She was caught posing with groups of fans while she was on vacation. People are now ridiculing her for her past statements on not leaving your home unless you have to. Vacation is not a have to. In the third spot is Ava Louise creates a TikTok challenge. So she's not technically a celebrity. The only reason she became known as an online influencer is because she invented a TikTok challenge that went viral. But she is kind of famous now if you go check her out. She was just a 21 year old New Jersey college student when she made up a fake coronavirus challenge and videotaped herself licking an airplane toilet seat. This caused others to start filming themselves licking public toilet seats and calling it a coronavirus challenge. At first, it was probably all fun and games as she didn't take the virus very seriously, but this got old very fast because the virus started taking the lives of many people and the whole toilet seat joke thing just was no longer funny. I mean, was it ever funny? I couldn't believe that people would even start doing this challenge or be dumb enough to like pretend to do it. She received a ton of hate for it and later admitted in a YouTube video that she did it to get attention online. So she got what she wanted. 
Really, I mean, she has tons of followers now and stuff. And our number two spot is the horrific time that Ryan Seacrest high fives a blind person. This is the type of situation that doesn't even have to age bad, it is just bad from the start. It was back in 2009 when Ryan was the host on American Idol and did an interview with a contestant that was moving on in the competition. Ryan, however, forgot that he was blind and while doing the interview, he tried to high five him. The moment was incredibly uncomfortable for everyone and if you haven't seen it, Ryan basically starts trying to talk to him through the high five and like pretends he was doing that the whole time, like he didn't mean to do it. He tried to make it seem like he didn't forget that he was blind, but we all knew and understood what exactly happened. No matter how old the video clip gets, it still does not get easier to watch. You guys should seriously go watch it. It's it's cringeworthy. In at number 10, Quentin Tarantino. So it's my it's my job to try and ask you to. And I'm all, shutting you know? your butt down. And that's that's entirely <laughs> your that's entirely this your, is a, your What a line. I'm shutting your butt down. Quentin Tarantino was having none of this interviewer's questions, but still trying to go along with it. He kept his cool for oh about three minutes before the gloves started to come off. The journalist's name is Krishnan Guru Murthy, and he has become notorious for asking celebrities the most awkward and really big questions about themselves, their past, and their their work. Stuff that would be better suited for a 3 hour podcast or an episode of 60 minutes. However, during these press junkets where they're only doing the interview to sell their film, it's hardly the place or time. In at number 9, Cara Delevingne. Let's just say her dry British humor was not really received by these happy go lucky morning news anchors at CBS Sacramento. At the start of the interview, she was asked some very dumb questions. For example, the film Paper Towns was based on a book, so they asked her if she had read the book and then immediately after made a snide comment about her probably not having enough time to read. Kara obviously takes offense to this judging by her body language, but instead decides to flip it into a joke saying that she didn't even read the script, just winged the whole thing. The interviewers actually take this as factual for a moment before her laughing finally cuts the tension. And that's not even the most awkward part of this interview though. I think it probably is us. Yeah. Well then on that note. We figured as much. We figured as much. We'll let you go then. How about that? We'll let you go take a little nap, maybe get a Red Bull. How about that? After one interviewer asks her why she isn't as excited as her other interviews, she remarks that it's very early and that she thought it was going well, so again, jokingly, she says it must be you. And the interviewer in the middle, like, oh my god, she sounded so bitter. That line of, well, we'll let you go take a little nap and have a Red Bull, how about that? Yes, how about that level of professional journalism? Good job, good morning, Sacramento. In at number 8, Kourtney Kardashian. After her sister Kim was robbed in Paris, Today Extra, an Australian news outlet, was interviewing Kourtney via satellite from Los Angeles. Okay. They asked her how Kim was doing following this traumatic event, but suddenly Courtney's face just freezes. You then can sort of hear what sounds like her publicist saying, do not answer that question. Looks like uh, Courtney doesn't really want to go there with that question. I think she's question. blanking me. I think she's totally blanking I on that question. I think there's probably a PR person there saying, you know, don't talk about it. The interviewer then goes on a bit of a rant saying that she could simply say her sister is doing fine as they too speculate that she was told to be quiet. However, she then does answer the question on her own saying, she's not doing great, I think we're all still shaken up. And her response to what appeared to be her blanking was that the audio from their end wasn't coming through. In at number 7, Jesse Eisenberg. Do you know the um, comedian Carrot Top? Yes. Horrible. You were like the uh, carrot top of interviewers. No, and it's a good thing. It's I'm gonna a good go thing. cry because... now. No, don't cry now. While promoting the film Now You See Me, Jesse Eisenberg just could not contain his utter disdain for this interview. Right out of the gate, he was on the offensive. The interviewer refers to Morgan Freeman as simply Freeman, for which Jesse takes offense to. Oddly enough, he then, as you saw, remarks she's the carrot top of interviewing, which insults the interviewer so bad that she hurries Jesse to complete a magic trick just so that they can wrap it up. And the entire interview interview is just one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever seen, and this is only number 7 on the list. Trust me though, if you haven't watched this full interview, you must. You must do it. It is just a terrible exchange back and forth between an actor and a vlogger, essentially. In at number 6, Samuel L. Jackson. When you are interviewing a celebrity as big as Samuel L. Jackson, it's imperative that you do your homework. You know, like, learn his name. When Sam Jackson was promoting the Robocop remake, he was asked about a recent Super Bowl commercial he did. Sam replies, what Super Bowl commercial? And then hits KTLA reporter Sam Rubin with this. What Super Bowl commercial? Oh, 
You know what? I have been my mistake. I, you know See what? what? See, you're, you're as crazy as the people on Twitter. Jackson then proceeds to say, I'm not Lawrence Fishburne. We don't all look alike. We may be all black and famous, but we all don't look alike. And Ruben repeatedly apologizes for this very public faux pas, but the damage is done and this just got super awkward. Jackson doesn't let up though. He questions Sam Rubin saying, you're the entertainment reporter? To make his point known, Samuel L. Jackson posted this image on Twitter of him wearing a t-shirt that says he's not Lawrence Fishburne. You know, just to avoid any further confusion. In at number 5, Jim Carrey. At the New York Fashion Week in 2017, Jim Carrey made a rare appearance and while walking down the red carpet, he did his best to avoid an interview with E! News. At first he tried to kind of twirl around a few times and not really stand still hoping that that would work, but she was persistent. Carrey then says he wanted to find the most meaningless event that he could go to and that's how he ended up there. The interviewer, trying to keep the integrity of this event, I claims that it's a celebration of icons, for which Jim says, icons don't exist, I don't believe in personalities, I don't believe you exist, but there is a wonderful fragrance in the air. And before departing from this awkward interview, he leaves her with this little nugget of truth. Is relevant that's not that yeah. Here's uplifting. the thing, it's not our world. None that's of this is key. real? Nope. nope. So you're just passing We don't through. matter. In at number four, Dakota Johnson. This without a doubt has to be the cringe heard around the world. We got to watch the live falling out between Dakota Johnson and her mother Melanie Griffith on the red carpet of the Oscars. Oh the Oscars, please insert fake laughter here. Man Hollywood is so fake. Just because the cameras are rolling they fake laugh their way through this entirely awkward interview and the whole thing started off on a really bad note. The interviewer praises Melanie while repeatedly calling Dakota her little girl. Which she is, but it just downplays how successful she's been on her own. Then when her mother is asked if she's seen Fifty Shades of Grey, her mom outright says that she wouldn't watch the movie, which clearly hurts her daughter regardless of the content and the positive reviews. A kid is always looking for that recognition from their parents. In at number 3, Robert Downey Jr. This guy again. You remember that uh, interviewer from earlier that was just a little too pushing? Well, he's back again, but this time with RDJ. And didn't I tell you folks earlier that he was known for just having the worst interviewers? I mean, this guy should be questioning politicians, not actors about their upcoming movies. He goes way too deep with Robert Downey Jr. in this interview, to the point where Robert Downey Jr. just says, you know what, we're done here. Uh, uh, what are we doing? Uh, uh, well, I'm just asking questions. That's all. Right. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Oof. That slapped so hard it felt like a movie. Speaking of slaps, when Downey stands up to leave, he gives Krishnan a very hard pat on the shoulder as if to say, good work you dummy. The reason why he got so upset was because these questions virtually came out of left field. He went from asking him about superhero movies to Robert's, let's say, tumultuous past. In at number 2, Tom Hardy. If you thought that was hard to watch, just wait until you see this awkward interview with Tom Hardy. At the Toronto Film Festival during a press conference for his film Legend, he's asked by an LGBT news organization about his sexuality, claiming that while his character is upfront about it, Tom on the other hand has been much more ambiguous about his sexuality, which leads to this kind of terrible exchange. It's the epitome of awkwardness. Are you asking me about my sexuality? Um, sure. <laughs> Why? Why? Um, Thank you. you. Okay. Why, why, why indeed. That thank you he gives at the end too, oof, I felt that, I felt that. Last but not least in our number one spot, Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld is one of the most successful comedians of all time. His show Seinfeld was on television for 9 years and Jerry's decision to go out on top proved to be one of the most lucrative deals ever for this comedian. Since the final episode, the show has generated over 3 billion dollars in repeat fees, but for whatever reason Larry King thought they cancelled the show. Even though Larry King worked for CNN, he wasn't known for his hard hitting questions, yet for whatever reason he decided to use an interview promoting Jerry Seinfeld's B movie to ask him if Seinfeld had been cancelled. Is this still CNN? Don't I was the number one show on television, Larry. You were Do you know who I am? And you can see in Seinfeld's body language how frustrated he gets when Larry even tries to insinuate this. Jerry does not back down though and immediately goes on the attack, telling King that he was the number one show on television before adding the very crass line of, Do you know who I am? What's the deal with you not knowing who I am? 